Drugs used in the treatment of cough. Now, what is cough? Cough is basically a protective reflex. So, it's a forceful release of air from the lungs, which removes irritant matter and secretions. Now, it is for the expulsion of the secretions and the irritant matter from the air passages and most often it's a defensive mechanism of the body. The stimulation of mechanoreceptors, which are present at the pharynx, trachea, bronchi and bronchioles, causes a ferrin nerve such as vagus and glossopharyngeal to take the impulse to the cough center which is present in the medulla. From there, efferent nerves such as vagus, phrenic, spinal carry the response to effector organs such as glottis, intercostal, diaphragm, major expiratory and inspiratory muscles which initiate the cough reflux by contracting. So there is an expulsion of air from the lungs to remove the irritant matter and secretions. Now the cough can be of two types. It can be productive or non-productive. Productive cough needs to be allowed, it shouldn't be suppressed and it may be a sign of underlying disease. Non-productive cough can be a reason for discomfort and in cases such as hernia and surgery, post-surgery, it is advisable to suppress non-productive cough. The drugs that can be used in the treatment of cough include central cough suppressants such as opioids and non-opioids, pharyngeal demulsants such as lozenges and cough drops, expectorants such as potassium iodide and adjuvants which are mucolytics such as bromoxine and bronchodilators such as salbutamol. Central cough suppressants. Now, as I told you, cough uh, is basically the stimulation of mechanoreceptors, impulse of which is carried by efferent nerves to the cough center in the medulla. So how central cough suppressants act is by inhibiting the cough center in the medulla and they reduce the sensitivity of the cough receptors to the activated afferents. So they desensitize the cough receptors. This includes, one of them can be opioids such as codeine and folcodeine. Now, although these are less potent than morphine and the degree of analgesia is almost equivalent to that of aspirin, they happen to be more selective for cough centers and their action lasts for almost 6 hours. So, although these drugs seem very beneficial, they also come with the side effects associated with opioids such as uh, depression, drowsiness and very importantly, constipation. Folcodine, on the other hand, unlike codeine, has no analgesic or addictive property and it's also longer acting. So opioids include codeine and folcodine. Apart from that, we have opium alkaloids such as noscapine. Now noscapine also depresses cough. It has no analgesic effect, no narcotic effect a narcotic effect and no dependence liability. It's equipotent with codeine and it's often used in spasmodic cough. Non-opioids such as dextromethorphan, these are, these come with no side effects of opioid and are equipotent with codeine and uh, unlike opioids they have no addicting and no constipating effect and no impairment of mucociliary function. So, uh, so there are opioids, non-opioids and then there are antihistamines. Now antihistamines are useful such as chlorpheniramine and promethazine. They are sedative and anticholinergic. So they reverse the bronchospasm caused by inflammation. And they reduce the inflammation which is the uh, source of uh, the cough. The next we have pharyngeal demulsions. Now demulsior, demulsior means to caress soothingly in Latin. So what pharyngeal demulsions do is they increase the flow of saliva and produce a soothing effect on the pharyngeal mucosa 
thereby reducing the efferent impulses arising from the irritated mucosa. So they have a soothing effect which is a symptomatic relief and they reduce the impulse. How they do so is by increasing the flow of saliva. These include lozenges, cough drops, candy sugar, maybe a drop of lemon, things like that. The next group of drugs is expectorants. Now expectorants increase the bronchial secretion. So they, they irritate the, uh, the lining and they cause an increase in the bronchial secretion. So drugs, uh, iodides are bronchial uh, uh, irritators and ammonium salts. There are uh, volatile oils such as uh, cedarwood oil, eucalyptus oil. And apart from that, they also decrease the viscosity of the expectorant. So how expectorants act is by irritating the bronchial lining and by increasing the production of bronchial secretions which covers the irritated mucosa. Uh, apart from that, there are bronchodilators. Uh, I think I missed this out. Bronchodilators are basically beta-2 agonists. So as we have studied in beta agonists, they act on the beta 2 receptors which are present in the lung and cause bronchodilation. So cough may be a result from bronchospasm and this is where beta 2 agonists might be very useful. Mucolytics. Now mucolytics depolymerize the mucopolysaccharides in bronchial secretions so normally the respiratory mucose is very watery uh, and the glycoproteins in the mucosa are uh, linked by disulfide bonds to form polymers making it slimy however in respiratory diseases these glycoproteins form large polymers with the plasma proteins which are present in the exudate and the secretions become thick and viscid so mucolytics depolymerize these mucopolysaccharides thereby liquefying the sputum making it less viscid. This helps it to be easily expectorated. So a common example of a mucolytic is bromexine. With this we come to an end of all the drugs that are used in the treatment of cough. A quick revision, there were central cough uh, suppressants, pharyngeal demulsants, uh, expectorants, mucolytics and bronchodilators. Thank you so much for watching.